Let's go and come back the whole thing. So it's forming, it's casting a shadow on the opposite side. I will do a separate tutorial on how to observe light and shadow. But in this one, I'll just keep it to the technical side of mark making. Hey guys, in this tutorial, I would like to talk about different ways that you can draw and concentrate on specific ways of mark making. Different styles that you can create with your pencil. Um, and your rubber. So again, we're only covering graphite, but feel free to use some of these techniques for other materials like pen or ink or charcoal and so on. And I would like to start with different things that can affect your value. One of these would be, of course, how soft your pencil is or how hard it is, but another one is pressure so say this is a 2b pencil and i'm going to start feather light and then as i go along i'm going to be applying more pressure and more pressure and more pressure and here's the strongest i'll press i think if i press harder i'll just break the pencil lead so this is 2b now i'm going to go with the 5b again really light so this is 5b and now i'll do same thing with a 9b so this is 9b so you can see how even though you're using the same pencil you can still achieve a really soft look a really light look or you can achieve a really dark, very strong shaded look. Cross hatching is quite an old technique. It was used in many different ways throughout history for etching and engraving, drawing and many other things. So the main thing about cross hatching is that you're using lines and these lines sort of cross over a little bit. When I was a student, art student in Moscow, this was one of the first and main techniques that we would have to work on for our drawing skill classes. Something we would be marked on. So I'm starting off with quite a neutral, sort of a not too dark, not too light shading and then by crossing over I'm building up the intensity of the value to the desired effect So I've been using 4B pencil and now I'm going to go for something a little bit harder for edges too hard. I'm going to go for the F.
the reason why I've taken a harder pencil now is because I want to go really really light around the area of the highlight and not to go too strong. And now I'm going back to the 4B. I've made a video about different types of pencils and their differences and I will link it down below so you can watch it if you haven't done so until now a 5B pencil If you love doing cross hatching or if this is something you think of getting into one thing you need to remember is that you always need to keep your pencils sharp and your lines should always cross and go in different directions Now that I've got majority of my shadows down, I'm going to go and sort of tweak it a bit to make sure that I've got the right shape. And then I've got back to my harder pencil. So as you already have probably realized, the light is falling from this direction. So it's forming, it's casting a shadow on the opposite side. I will do a separate tutorial on how to observe light and shadow. this one I'll just keep it to the technical side of mark making to go for even a darker one I'll go for 8B and go over the really really dark patches Going for a harder pencil because that one's too dark for this area. And now perfecting and finishing off edges and little bits and pieces. Okay, now we can also tidy things up. With using your rubbers. I'm using a petty rubber for this one, but you can use any old rubber. And 
If you would like to find out more about robots you can use while working with Grafa, again, I will put a link down below for my tutorial about graphite materials. So there we go. So this is the cross hatching technique for creating shadow and light. So as you can see, the main thing here is using lines, right? I'm not smudging them, nothing like that, but using them in a crisscross fashion and creating shading by overlaying these lines. Now this technique is kind of like cross hatching, but cross hatching you go across, you know, to create your shades. Now with this one you only use lines going in one direction. So when you are creating this technique, make sure that you only create lines in one direction. Because as soon as you cross them, you already crossed into a cross hatching. Now I'm going to actually take one of these pencils. So the way to create shading is by making your lines darker. So by using softer pencils or by pressing hard. And another way you can create that darker effect is by inlaying more lines between the other lines. I'm still going in that same direction. I'm going over these previous lines, getting them dark and also going in between them. Some people use very short strokes and just go like this. You can do that as well. That can be quite fun. Just make sure that they all go in the same direction. So just remember if you need things to be darker, you can use more pressure on your pencil. personally prefer to use cross hatching because I think it helps to describe the shape a bit better but I guess if you like a comic book artist or you just want to create that specific look all that stretchiness of everything going in one direction 
then this is definitely for you. Also, if you are creating drawings with movement, like you want to portray speed, you know, someone is running or something like this, doing this technique can really, really help in achieving that result. And if that's what you want to do, you might as well practice on things like still life first. And some areas shadows become sharper and in other areas they have really soft almost blurred edge that's why really whenever you're drawing ideally especially when you're learning ideally you would be drawing either from life or from a photograph But again, if you'd like me to do a separate video on that, please let me know in the comments. Now there is also another finer technique of etching and usually used with the ink pen. That's when these lines are so precise they never even get together like this. See, this is a little bit getting a little bit smudgy. You can still see the direction. But there are so many lines that they're almost f forming this one um, block. But as I said, there, there's another technique and it's usually done with the ink pen. Again, if you're interested in that, let me know. And I'll be able to make a separate tutorial on that as well. There's so many things that I'd like to share with you guys. I just don't know what's the next one will be. So please let me know. Alright, and now I'm going to go back in with this putty rubber. create a stronger highlight maybe just a little bit lighter down here no this is actually too light now I'm gonna go over this just a little bit so there you go so this is hatching um, technique of mark making rendering where you're just going back and forth without any kind of um, any kind of structure to your mark making so only focusing on the shade only focusing on what's darker what's lighter and using your rubber to not just tidy up but to also create marks now I'm using graphite pe um, pencil which is just plain graphite you can use your normal pencils
for that too and a chip similar effect but not the same As you can see, this is a much quicker technique, but it's probably not as precise. This technique is very popular with people who are just starting up and they w did not have any specific instructional education, just want to do a bit of doodling, drawing. This is usually the technique that they go for. So as you can see, to create the highlight, I'm going back in there with my rubbers. So there we go. So you can see how much quicker this one is. The problem with graphite is that at certain angles it becomes shiny and it becomes quite hard to see there you go that's just sort of a back and forth rendering without using any structure or anything like this just by doing that kind of a movement I will be using smudging materials to create a really really smooth kind of a finish. This kind of technique is usually used by artists who focus on photorealism or when I create that sort of a perfect finish without any visible pencil markings. So for this technique, what you really want to do is create a reasonably smooth shading to start with, just so that it will help you much things later. And now it's time to smudge. Now mistakenly people think that um, when you use smudging techniques things only can be done in a really soft way. In reality you can shade it in as dark as you want and still create a soft look by layering like this. So see how I'm smudging in between the layers? and then deciding if I need to add more graphite in certain areas. So I'm trying 
trying to go quite smooth and trying not to create too many harsh marks so that it's easier to blend them afterwards you also have a choice of completely smudging things when you can't even see pencil marks at all or you can go for just a softly blended look where you can still see that it's a pencil drawing whenever you're drawing especially if it's not a very large piece always make sure that you position yourself in the way that you can turn your paper around because it helps a lot I also have some tutorials on how to use your arm and your wrist when you're drawing in a specific way to help you with your shapes and that's already available on Patreon again I will leave, leave a link down below so you can go and just for eight dollars a month you can watch all the extra videos on very tricky parts of the techniques that I'm showing you here to really go deep into specific ways of drawing I also give you special exercises you can do as well to improve your feel for shades or other technical difficulties that you may come across if you're learning how to draw so what I'm doing here is I'm tidying it up a little bit and I'm getting rid of all of these lines that I no longer need and I'm also using putty rubber to lift a little bit of graphite off some of the areas that I want to be just a little bit lighter than they are at the moment so it's this little bit here now this light is the reflection of the light that falls down and then bounces back if you would like for me to make a video specifically on these little bits and pieces please comment down below and then I will know that there is an interest in a specific topic and you can see how some techniques may take a little bit more time others are really quick and now I can go back in with no pencil now this is still 4B so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to grab a 9B pencil to really create that depth I'm using it in a really soft way again just to make it easier for the blending when the time comes to it the 
this little bit the air would be the darkest shadow that you would have and making it a tiny bit darker through here and back for blending and now I'm gonna go and highlight highlight again in fact whenever you're drawing anything not necessarily smudging technique or any technique especially if it's a drawing that will take you a while to complete at the end always go over your highlights with the rubber because while you're working unknowingly you will be smudging it a little bit and that way you go and you can get it back to that state of white paper for extra contrast so this is the smudging technique and I used the smudging tool for more smudging tools and things like that, I will leave a link down below under the video. Another technique I wanted to show you, which again, I rarely use, and that's sort of like um, stippling or um, uh, sort of like scrabbling techniques where rather than using any particular lines in any order or softly blending things you sort of just go and create a funny kind of a texture like this by creating this kind of a mark making again it can be really interesting to use with a pen as well ink pens I think it can actually look really beautiful with ink pens. Uh, I've done a few classes with my students on that. And what you can also achieve with this is the type of a texture that it can give you. Because remember, whenever you're making lines visible, not only are you creating shading, you're also creating a specific texture that an onlooker or a viewer whoever whoever sees your work will be sort of making connections with so for example if you're working on the landscape for instance and you are creating tree bark or maybe some kind of a texture that you might you know you might want to Maybe little rocks or something like this, little pebbles in the distance. So this can be quite a quite a good descriptive technique as well. Other than that, it can be used for even things like still life. A little bit unusual, but still can be used for that. So small little squiggly lines. I'm using 5B pencil, now I'm going to go for a 2B pencil. And as you layer it over and over, it becomes more and more uniform. It is up to you how soft and how uniform you want it to be. If you are in for that specific texture then I'd suggest to make it a little bit more visible and a little bit more expressive now I'm going to go into the cast shadow or falling shadow as I like to call it. It's the shadow that's created by the object when it blocks the light. Which 
Pencil. I'll go back to put the softer one. To B. Okay, now it's time to add a little bit more of a highlight. from the soft light and I'm actually going to go with this rubber to create a really bright highlight so there you go there's your scribbling or scrambling stippling whatever you want to call it technique cross stippling I guess since there are little dots <laughs> 